It's GBH's Morning Edition. I'm Joe Matthew. Thanks for being with us. Like winter, a vaccine is coming. And as Juliet Kayyem writes in The Atlantic this month, the pandemic is unfolding on a split screen. But with caseloads and hospitalizations rising to the highest levels we've seen yet, some are having trouble deciding on which screen to watch and whether they should even trust what they're seeing on that screen. Juliet is, of course, a Harvard professor, former assistant secretary for Homeland Security, a longtime GBH contributor. And she's back with us on Morning Edition. It's great to see you, Juliet. Great to see you. Good morning. Good morning. The split screen is confounding for a lot of us. Yeah. And we know good news is coming. We've seen remarkable headlines just in the last couple of weeks. They're actually inoculating people now in the UK. But we don't know exactly when this is going to happen, how many people, how many doses there's been a lot of misinformation, and Juliet, the next few months could make that first surge look small. That that is right. So the the bad screen, let's put it that way, is a, is a uh, a brutal winter ahead. We know it. We're already starting to see the numbers here in Massachusetts. You have Governor Baker already responding. So I can't say it enough. You know, it's it's more of the same, if not even more of the same in terms of protecting yourself and your family, uh, because the next six to eight weeks with the cold are going to be really hard, the isolation, the economic impact, I get it. Uh, but um, hope springs eternal. So I have to look at the other sc other screen, which is an unfolding uh, a rolling recovery, as I call it, which is over the course of 2021, uh, you are going to see uh, the FDA relatively soon approve at least uh, the first two, let's remember there's a whole bunch in, in uh, being tested, the first two vaccinations and we will have a, a rolling recovery over 2021 uh, uh, with manufacturing and then uh, delivery through the United States. It's gonna be big and ugly and, um, and over-inclusive and under-inclusive and uh, everyone's gonna be clamoring to get it and then some proportion of the population is gonna be you know, sort of wary to get it. So we have to sort of recognize what's coming down the pike. And you have a presidential transition in the middle of it or at the beginning of it. Well, to that end, there've been a lot of questions about the distribution yeah. plan here, Juliet. The president has suggested the military will play a role in this. We also know that airlines are already moving doses. Yes. Uh, so they're ready and that companies like McKesson and drugstore chains like CVS and Walgreens are actually yeah. going to be the ones that make this happen. Is there a plan? Yeah, there is. It's it's a it's at the at the high level detail. So let me uh, give the Trump administration credit for obviously, uh, you know, we, we got a vaccine. It was a private sector uh, investment, but Operation Warp Speed was part of it, uh, and including and it should be noted, uh, purchasing uh, doses before there was approval, so sort of yes. guaranteeing a market to the private sector. Mm -hmm. The president, however, uh, tends to invoke the military when he doesn't know the answer to the question or hasn't invested the details. That is going to, and I think. I think we have to assume that the broad uh, pockets of how something like this distributes, which I'll get into in a second, um, are thought through, but the details are going to fall onto the Biden administration, mostly because we don't know uh, what our supply chain looks like, what, um, uh, uh, you know, what our surge capacity is. But the good news is, is we know how this will unfold. There will be allocation decided by the CDC, uh, who goes first, who goes second, the harder ones are who goes fifth, sixth, seventh. You are hearing these ethical debates about should we put critical uh, infrastructure workers before elderly, where do teachers fall in? Those are hard decisions. And I just remind people, lines have to be drawn, right? We were, there, there is gonna be no dearth of un seeming unfairness in this. If you are 65, you get into one pool. If you are 64 and 350 days years old, you do not. So um, that is the nature of lines. Then there's distribution, which is the last mile, uh, which will be not worked by the military, but by the states. I was on a call yesterday with our own state um, about how they're going to do that, how they're thinking about it. Uh, there's demand issues around getting people less hesitant to take the vaccine. We need to get to herd immunity. And then finally, verification. That's the brand new world we're going to live in. We're going to have to prove that we're vaccinated hmm. to do certain things like get on airplanes. And I think employers are going to be a huge part of this, uh, demanding that their employees for a condition of employment get vaccinated. Yeah. Uh, so everything is new, um, but it's following uh, familiar supply chain, last mile uh, planning. Uh, so I, I think this can be, you know, because because we are scaling over time, uh, these uh, disruptions can be easily fixed. In other words, if something stops, you know, it gets fixed in a day or two. We're not talking mm -hmm. months anymore. And we're certainly not talking years. 
What's Governor Baker's plan? What's the plan for Massachusetts then, Juliet? Are, are we covered here? Are we set to go? Yeah. Yeah, so the first wave is going to be the hospital workers and, and that's gonna be defined by state. So right, so does it include administrative workers who are who are at the hospitals trying, yeah. My, my um, preference is yes, right? I mean, in other words, we just wanna get lots of people vaccinated. Let's draw lines, you know, let's have overgeneralizations rather than under inclusiveness. Uh, so those are gonna be done at the hospitals because that's easy. That is where your pool of people are and that and they know how to do that. The second, and, and that also includes senior care uh, facilities, uh, 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 people, patients there, that will also be done at those senior care facilities or at hospitals, depending. We have not, excuse me, the CDC has not decided uh, the second priority group. That is a debate going on now. Will it include critical infrastructure workers or, uh, or uh, uh, people with comorbidities or elderly? Um, I, as I said earlier, I'm, I think my preference would be we do the critical infrastructure workers and teachers. We've got to get this economy moving. We've got to get our kids back in school. And then that will be done um, either at place of work or more likely health facilities, public health facilities. And, and, and we know how to, we know how to surge and, and um, here in this state, because we've done it before. Mm -hmm. We're talking with Juliet Kayam on GBH's Morning Edition, and I wish I had as much time as you normally have on BPR, because we're just getting started <laughs> here. But I want to ask you before you go about, uh, concerns about trusting the vaccine. Yeah. This new poll by Mass Inc. today finds half the people in Massachusetts, just imagine some other states, say they'd wait for somebody else at least before right. they went to get it. 7% say they'd never take it, Juliet. How much yeah. of a problem is this that? People ask me what's the biggest challenge, and I think it might be this one. Look, in the past with polio, we've had um, uh, 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 um, what do they call them? my kids call them Instagram like influencers. Influencers come out like Elvis Presley did uh, at yes. the Ed Sullivan show, and and you saw you know uh, polio uh, vaccine skyrocket. Uh, so we're going to need influencers to convince communities based on who they are, what their population is. We're seeing weird distinctions between men and women, women more reluctant. I think that has to do with the fact it hasn't been tested on kids. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but one of the things that's important to remember is this is where logistics are policy. I think that the more the transparency there is, the more uh, that this is functioning in a way that makes sense, um, uh, the more likely people are willing to take it. In other words, if it seems unfair, disorganized, chaotic, they're going to be like, wait, what the heck is going on here? But we need to get people on board. I do think that polling will change over time. We've already seen it change a little bit. But if those are the numbers we're seeing uh, from Mass Inc., and if that's the polling, we have a lot of work to do here. So, uh, so you know, Red Sox and Celtics and yeah. all our other Massachusetts influencers. I, I'm, I'm coming up short with others, but there I are others. I can just see get Big Poppy with a needle in his arm now. Exactly. Juliet Kayam, it's great to see you. Great to have you back. Find the column we're talking about at The Atlantic. It's a great read, as all of uh, Juliet's columns are. The month the pandemic started to end is the headline. Yes. I like the sound of that. Juliet, Be come hopeful. see us again soon. Stay hopeful. This is GBH's Morning Stay Edition.